This morning we uh, started on something that may be a little strange uh, to the here to the ears for some people. Uh, health and healing is psychosomatic, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, praise God. And I realized that you know there are in the in there that the uh, architect and builder is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now we work on congregations, I work within congregations, within the office that God has set us in. And I said, well, I'm a maintenance guy. You know, you know, when a maintenance guy comes around, he just maintains what's already built, make sure that it's shored up and looks good and works properly. So I want to elaborate on that, but let me give you a definition real quick, just in case you don't know. Uh, two uh, parts of this definition of psychosomatic, according to Webster. Um, uh, first definition of, comma, relating to, comma, concerned with, comma, are involving both mind and body, the psychosomatic nature of man. Uh, that quote was from Herbert Ratner. The second part of that definition is of, comma, relating to, comma, invol involving, comma, are concerned with bodily symptoms caused by mental or emotional disturbance. I want to read that again. Amen. Amen. So that you get that. Of, comma, psychosomatic, comma, relating to, comma, involving, Comma, are concerned with bodily symptoms. Concerning with bodily symptoms. Uh -huh. <laughs> Caused by mental or emotional Come on disturbance. Come on. Amen. Now, now we've been dealing with this over a year with other different topics, but we've been walking in this course. And so let me, I want to bring this into our conversation here today before we get into the other things in my notes. Go to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. All of, if, if you look carefully, you'll notice all of the ministry of Jesus, or most of the ministry of Jesus, has to do with your mind. The Holy Spirit comes and continues with that conversation having to do with your mind. Uh -huh. Because we are, we've been well taught about our spirits, but we've neglected to deal with our minds. Because there's nothing, all things being equal, wrong with your spirit. Right. Amen. It's not sick. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. It's not lacking energy. Amen. There's nothing wrong with your spirit. It is in continual communication with the Spirit of God on the level of spirit. So there's nothing wrong with your spirit. The scriptures never encourage us to get our spirit saved. No, no. It deals with saving our souls. Uh -huh. Amen. Where our minds... <laughs> Are located, amen. So, this verse here, Romans chapter 12, you there say amen. Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12. And there's just so many, it's just a barrage of scriptures that, that deals with the mind. Now, you gotta, you have to also remember the setting that the Bible scriptures are written in. The setting that the Bible scriptures are written during the time of what we would refer to, looking back, as a time of mythology. There's a lot of myths floating around. It's not, you know, well, technically there's a lot of myth floating around today <laughs> with the different denominations. Yeah. So, so this, these scriptures come and were birthed into that thought realm, into that spirit realm of mythology. We would call it pagan thought. Then mythology wasn't a bad word like it is now. Then myth mythology was simply telling a story to enhance on a spiritual truth. And there was different approaches to that. We are familiar with the terminology that makes us comfortable is parables. Uh -huh. 
Instead of referring to Jesus' teachings as mythology, we refer to Jesus' teachings as parables. And he taught in parables. He always taught in parables to, the current, to a larger group of people. He only had the sincere, serious teaching was among his disciples, and he did that privately. Yes. So a lot of what we are learning now is the private teachings of Christ where he draws a line and a contrast to what the parable meant mm -hmm. and how you to apply that to your life. The Spirit of God deals with that based on our mentality, and we're going to get into that in our conscious makeup. Whatever makes up your consciousness affects the way you, your mind thinks and how you see and perceive life and how you think about yourself and what you think and feel about God. Amen. And because of all this emotion, see, we have a lot of mental trauma going on all the time, and we don't even know it, and, and our emotions are stretched all the time. How is that more true for us today than then? We have social media. We have news. Uh -huh. Amen. They didn't have no news broadcast every day. We, I mean, you can't go no place without seeing a flash on your phone. It's going uh -huh. to give you some notification of a disaster that happened someplace in the world. And, and you're going to, humanically, because you're human, have sympathy for the folk under those kind of conditions. And then another condition happened over this part of the world, another condition happened in that part of the world. They didn't have all that information of what's going on on the other side of the world. They just dealt with their own personal trauma, if they even had any personal trauma. But now we got everybody's traumas plus our family. Uh -huh. Come on now, come on. Now. Plus our family. We got, we got the world on our mind, stressing out our come emotions. On, on. If that's not enough, then we got family issues. Yeah. Yes, yes. And don't have no children. Because <laughs> ch ch if there's any emotion left, they got it. <laughs> so a lot of, and, and we don't realize how powerful our minds are. And, 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 but, and, and that, that lack of knowledge is killing us. Our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, lack of understanding why are we physically showing certain ailments? Why are we physically going through certain pains? Because you're mentally stressed. Yeah. Yes. And the Bible tells you don't be stressed. But man, I'm telling you, <laughs> you're talking about walking by faith. Come on now. I know some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all stressed don't mean to be stressed. Try not to be stressed. Can't even find no place not to be stressed. You should go to the beach and not be stressed. Can't even go to the beach no more and not be stressed. Amen. And praise God. <laughs> so in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be conformed or transformed, I should say, but be transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind. Be transformed. When your mind is renewed, transformation takes place in your body. <laughs> Let's read it again. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may, watch this, that you may prove. You need your mind renewed and transformed that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Ooh I, I need to get this right so I can prove. See, we are in the rescue me God business. Our prayers is about God rescuing us. That has nothing to do with God rescuing you. It's about you renewing your mind so that you can prove through your liveliness, through your livelihood, through your living, what God's will is for your, your life because your mind uh -huh. has been renewed. Even, and it's true, God wills for you to be blessed. Yes, yes. God's wills for you to prosper. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's God's will for you to live in health, uh -huh. to have joy. Yes. And that's his will. He's not opposed to you having any of that. But it's your mind. My mind. 
Now notice what's not there. Satan. No. Satan is not mentioned. It's your mind. My mind. And so let's go back to, to this definition. Cycle, <laughs> somatic. That second part says, relating to, involving, or concerned with bodily symptoms caused by mental or emotional disturbance. Caused by mental <laughs> or emotional Come disturbance. On. Come on. Now some of us got some, 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 some bodily problems simply because we're old. <laughs> you just been you just been living a long time, and you done put that body through some stuff. Now y'all, y'all, it's interesting that today we don't. Well, I don't do, but you, but you forget all the miles you put on that body before you got to the day. Some of us put some miles on this body. Right. Oh, come on now, y'all, y'all, y'all act like y'all don't want me to know, but I know. I know y'all, done, y'all, done, y'all done had some partying and some and some drinking, amen, and some staying up all night long. Amen. And some overeating. And you can put a whole bunch of miles on the body. And though today you may not have any words, but you have years of worrying and fretting and, 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 and you know, losing your temper and fighting. And, come on. Amen. Amen. Getting your heart broken relationships. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, we done had some emotional and some mental, mental. disturbance Amen. that comes out through the body. It's no strange thing, y'all. Y'all want to blame the devil. It ain't no devil. It's some of the life experiences that we had that we did not know how to avoid. Amen. If someone had just told us how to behave during these experiences and we listened to it, uh-huh. we would be having some of the physical challenges that we have. Amen. And remember, I, I threw it and we listened. And we wasn't just hearers, we was <laughs> we were doers. Because if you're just hearing, you ain't gonna be able to you gotta do yes. what you're hearing. Amen. Amen. And then you know, and then now now uh, Jesus informs us in teaching us how to pray. He informs us that we does you don't call God by any one of those names like Jehovah. Jaira, Nishi, and all that good stuff. Because that puts him, that, that, that distance him from you. That makes him distance from you. Uh-huh. He introduced prayer to us by addressing our Heavenly Father as Father. Yes. Which brings you into the family. It, it creates a relationship between child and father. So you're, you are in a relationship between child and father. So in this manner, pray. Now you're talking to him like you talk to a father. And as a father, he is going to father your spiritual production. Uh-huh. He's he, he going to father your spiritual growth. Yes. 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 Now, like children, you know, when we first come into the knowledge of this, he takes care of us. Everything, once we come into the goodness of our Heavenly Father and how he blessed us with everything, we can whine and he answered every cry. Like a baby. Every time a baby yells, you answer the baby's cry. Yelling means my diaper needs to be changed. Yelling means me, 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 I, 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 I'm hungry. I'm cold. I'm wet. Yelling means something because there's no communications yet. So you, as a parent, you know, when you're really good, you know exactly what the, each yell means. You, you, you can tell, you know, like anybody else don't know. But, when the, but, but if you're the parent of that child, a certain scream means, uh-oh, the diaper needs to be changed. Just, just through the, the yell, the sound. The next thing, another scream, to you, the parent, oh no, they're hungry. But to me, they're making noise. What's wrong with your crying baby? Oh, ain't nothing wrong with that baby. He did, just need a diaper change. And sure enough, the diaper needs to be changed. Oh, they're hungry. Or oh, they just want to be picked up. They want some attention. So when we as babes in Christ, sometimes we just want some attention. Amen. We ain't praying because we need anything. We just want some attention. Some attention. We, want, we want that a boy from God. Good job. We want a recognition. Yeah. 
Or sometimes we get in trouble and we want our Father to rescue us. Father, you know, if you, know, if you find it in your will to deliver me from this, deliver me from this, get me out of that, bless me with this, heal me of that. And, and, and it happens. But now some of you, and most of you in, in my view, what I can see, y'all been here a long time. You should be out of your diapers by now. Right. Now, what do we do to children? We teach them language. We teach them how to communicate. We teach them how to express themselves. And we begin to teach them what they should or should not do. We begin to train them up. We educate them. We train them up. And we expect them to get to a place that they move out, that they provide for themselves, that they get a job, they feed themselves. When they're wet, they change themselves. They bathe themselves. Amen. They actually can live in a house by themselves. So when they need something, they'll save up their own money. But in the, the modern day way of parenting, we do not allow our children to grow up. Because every time they call us on the phone and ask us for something that we have the power within, this, within our power to give them, we give it. Uh -huh. Amen. And the most, the most common thing that most children who are adults who don't live with you, the most common thing they ask for is money. Amen. They ask for other stuff, but I mean, that's, that's something almost true of everybody who looks parent. They ask for money. I don't care if it's $10 or $20. And if you got $10, $20, you don't feel like it. And now for my children, they, they're modern day kids. They, they got cash app. Can you cash app? They, they don't even want to see. They used to have to come see you to get the $20. You know, they used to have to sit there in front of you and tell you this story. You know, like, oh, man, I was driving down the street, and I got a flat, and, uh, and then I had to use my last dollar to put on a spare. They tell you some kind of story. Now they don't tell you no story. They don't even have to see you. They just, you know, they just call you on the phone. Could you, you know, grandpa, grandma, mama, daddy, could you cash at me? So it's become extremely impersonal. It's a transition. And they think of it as a transition. It's, 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 you become their come ups. That's what my son said. You become their come ups. What can I come up with? $20. <laughs> and as parents, and loving them and wanting to be with them and wanting to, you know, we, we give them the $20, we cash app them. Amen. We even put money in the cash app to cash app. We prepare to make sure we take care of their needs. And we think that because we don't have discipline, that God is just as soft in the heart toward us as we are toward our children. But he's not. It's time for you to figure it out. I blessed you with everything that pertains to life and to godliness. It's not a past tense. It's an already done it. So now you have to find out how to um, withdraw the blessings from your bank account. All right. You need to learn how to write a spiritual check where you can get manifestations of what's already yours. And it's time for the body of Christ to grow up collectively. So you're in notice, if you listen, you know, I don't listen to other ministers, but this is one thing that's coming common, is that they're not getting their faith prayers answered no more. And because when that happens, you know, like when we're in faith and we're going out as elders and we're praying for people and we're seeing miracles, we learn to put the scriptures together to say a particular prayer, a particular way, and we're thanking God. For the miracle, and it boom, there it is. And so, when as we grow older, and we and we in Bible school, and we go to church, and we get, get more familiar with scriptures, we become experts at praying. Uh -huh. And you notice that when we first started out in prayer, we didn't pray long because we didn't know nothing. We didn't know nothing. We, we we just prayed. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Thank you, Jesus. 
or Jesus wept. Thank you, Jesus. And that's it. But now that we know all these scriptures, our prayers have begun become long. And we're going to make sure we quote every single scripture that pertains to the problem we're trying to get a prayer answer to. And so the Bible says, you think because of your much speaking, come on. You think because of your much speaking, you're going to get your prayers answered. Ooh. And when it don't happen, now you got to think of why not. And we come up with new stuff. Are we, some of the stuff we have abandoned, we go back to. You know, you go back to those old landmarks where you don't know how to, to what's going on and where you're in a new territory. The old land. Let's go back to the old landmark. Maybe there's some sin in the camp. One of the things that I, I, I really like about scripture is this one scripture uh, that says, what God says to us, come, let us reason. <laughs> come on now, just don't just take something out of here. No, let's, let's, let's talk about this for a few minutes. Let's, let's come on, let us reason together a little bit. What do you mean there's sin in the camp? So sin in your camp, you think will stop God from blessing or answer your prayer? When God pours rain and blessings on the just and the unjust, but you are special? Come on now. All right. There's folks that don't even acknowledge God, don't even, don't, don't even give him praise, that are continually walking in what you're trying to obtain. They, they get it easily, but God is for some reason against you. Come on. God is no respecter. Come on, hear me. No, God not. is no respecter of person, and he's not treating you any different. No, no. But we have been taught to think something is wrong with us. There's nothing wrong with you other than what's going on in your mind. Uh -huh. Where the person that is receiving what you think you want, they don't have the same block and issues in their thought life as you have in yours. All right. Amen. So you need to get what's in your mind that's blocking you from receiving what's already yours out of your mind by renewing your mind. Look at your neighbor and say amen. Amen. So we've taken the educated, scientific uh, approach to this, and most people don't like science. It's a bad word. Amen. Science is a bad word. Praise God. And, and we want to find the relationship between spirit, body, and soul. Now, all my members in front of me know that we three parts. We know that we are, we are a spirit, uh -huh. we live in a body, and we have a soul. All of y'all know that. We have been well taught that. We need to know the relationship that the spirit, the body, and the soul have in coexisting together. How do one influence the other or vice versa? Yeah. We have been told that we should walk by our spirits. Walk by the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh, which comes into your soul area, into your mind area. We've been told that, but how to, we might have missed. We might have missed a step of two on how to, or how to recognize when I'm in the spirit, out of the spirit, in da 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 because you know that ego will play spiritual in a minute just yeah. to get his way. Yeah. It a post scripture and everything. But then there's something else that we have, and Pastor, it's true of this, that we learn through counseling. It's not that people don't know scripture. They know scripture. It's what's going on in their mind when they read the scriptures. All right. What do they expect God to do for them when they quote a scripture? How do they feel in, rela in their relationship with God? And so we have found out that, the, that you, you, your arm can't tell you and explain its armness. Your, your arm can't give out any explanation of its armness or your leg, it leg, meaning it can't explain the sensations that you're having in the arm. It can't explain the sensations that you're having in your back. It can't, your body can't give the explain. So it looks to your mind to explain what's going on into your body and identify it. Now, we learned in scripture that whatever you call a thing, that's what it is. Uh -huh. So we've gotten smart and learned to tell you when you're having a sensation in your body, don't name it. 
Because once you name it, it's yours. So do not name it strip strategy of Jesus Christ. Don't name it. Mm -hmm. But what am I going to do? Well, how did my mind get there to call that what it is? It's through your conscious. We all have a conscious and a subconscious. Your subconscious never forgets anything. Your conscious has a short-term memory. It, it, it's very short term, but your subconscious never forgets anything. We explain to you, it's very boring, there's not no gravy on it, but it's the issues of life. We explain to you that you were programmed since you were born. Uh -huh. You've been programmed by your family since you were born. Amen. Listening to adults because of your innocence and them just talking, you're ear dropping on the grown folks when you don't supposed to. I'm not listening, I'm just playing. Yes, you are, you're listening. And they say stuff like, our family has hay fever. It runs in our family. Or, our, you know, all the women in our family have cancer. And it manifests as breast cancer. Every woman in our family has breast cancer. That's what it, and you're listening to this stuff. This is all before faith teaching, so they ain't talking about faith right now, because y'all too old for that. See, faith ain't as old as y'all are. So you've been listening to denomination talking, and not faith talking. So when you were little and they didn't know about how to talk about faith, they talked fear. And they talked fear and what doctors talked all the time. And you got it in your subconscious. subconscious. And now that you are adult listening to faith teaching, you have not dealt with that in your subconscious. And every time you make a statement or a stand, your subconscious will flick it away. No, no, no. And we hear ourselves saying, I knew this was going to happen to me. Two, I'm healed in the name of Jesus, but our family has hay fever. But in Jesus' name, I'm healed. Oh, I must, I must have made sense right there. In my, fam in, in, in my family, it, arthritis runs in my family. Rheumatoid arthritis. My grand great grandmother had it. My grandmother had it. My mama got it. My granddaddy had it. It runs in our family. So, it, ooh, 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 that must be, I'm having pains. That must be arthritis. Our movie that you looked at and got emotional, drawn in by the acting. And you begin to feel sorry for the tragedy of the movie or the play. You begin to put your emotion there. You, you begin to identify with the pain they're going through. Come on now. Or like me. I, 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 I tell them myself. Like, like, I like Lou Ross. When I was growing up, I loved Lou Ross. I played Lou Ross all the time. That I wanted to sing like Lou Ross. And, and, and my song was, Boy, hey, me down my walking cane. Hand me down my walking cane. I want to take I strolled down memory lane when I was 21. <laughs> it was a very good year. And, and, and I, I, I love Lou Ross. I just, and, and, I, and, I, and I visualized, because I saw people around 70, come on, talk to me, when I was little, with a walking cane. And my, the men in my family were dapper. They wore hats and suits and these cool canes. And when they walked, and as a little boy, I said, when I get like that, when I get like that, I'm gonna be just like them. I'm gonna be dapper. I'm gonna have hat. Do I have hats? Yeah. <laughs> I got hat, I got hats and I, and, and, and I, you know, I got a couple of suits too. And, but what I don't have yet is that walking cane. <laughs> But now that I'm 70, my subconscious remembers my 70-year-old uncles, my 70-year-old grandfather, dapper, walking with their walking canes. And they use those walking canes as a testimony of what they've been through. Boy, have you known what I've survived? If you know what I've gone through, you understand that this is just a badge of glory. So now my body, without no permission, 
is trying to give me pain. My knees trying to give me pain. Come on, talk to me now. See, see, y'all, I'm trying to, I'm trying to relate something that has to do with your mind. It's just, what, what's in the subconscious? Uh, and I'm saying, where the heck? I ain't never prayed for no pain. And my wife and I was having this, this discussion years and years and years ago. I did an x-ray for this doctor years and years and years ago. And he told me, he says, and I, I think I was in my early 50s. He told me that at that time, he said, uh, uh, Mr. Wee, uh, your body, in every joint of your body, there's arthritis. I was in my 50s. I hear what you're saying. And didn't have no problem, Pastor. None. Because I'm in my 50s. I'm still young. <laughs> I'm still walking, running, jacking, whatever I want to do, trying to dance, whatever I want to do, no pain. Uh -huh. None. Dr. Garnett reminded me, he says, you are anemic. Told me I was anemic. The first time I ever heard that. And you got arthritis in all your joints. Nothing. He says, and, you, and he, was, he was bragging on me. He said, you move fantastic. You have no, though I can see this here, you have absolutely nothing physically manifested in your body. Where you move, where you bend, nothing says that you have this. And the x-ray says you have this. I said, I doctor, the x-ray been saying I had that for years. I ain't got that. I'm not in agreement with that. Then all of a sudden, this October, on the plane, Going on our vacation, something happened to my body that has never happened before, to both of us. It's never happened to us before. Never had a problem flying, never. And then all of a sudden, and from that point on, my body's been trying to tell me something that's been locked up in my subconscious all my life. At, Simon, at the same time, God introduced me to the truth. The truth is that you're an infinite being. And kenosis says the more you hold on truth, the stronger you get. Uh -huh. So you got to keep on renewing your mind. Yeah. I'm an infinite being. Keep on. I'm not subject to this. It, and not, don't call it what the doctors call it. I call it this. I am not subject to this. Uh -huh. I am an infinite being. I'm only subject to that which I hold in my mind, as a, mind, a man thinks, come on, help me, y'all. So is he. As a man thinks, I'm not. I don't think about this. I'm not subject to this. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now, faith is a fight, so that means you're going to have some opposition. Where in your body? But I am not a body. I am not a body. Amen. And I am, I am persistent with truth as my body is persistent with an illusion Amen. and a lie. Amen. Now, here's the thing that Scripture tells us. He says, now the law of life, everybody say the law of life, the law of puts, life. To not, puts to not or makes nothing of the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is in your members. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The law of life comes from your spirit. You are a spirit. Uh-huh. And from being a spirit, you have the law of life, yeah. living. It's a law. Yeah. Or you yeah. could not be an infinite being if you didn't have a law of life in you already. Jesus tells the disciples, don't look to the skies or the seas, because the kingdom of God does not come with observation. But the kingdom of God, talk to me somebody, uh -huh. is within you. Yeah. So since I got what I need, I need to know how to get it out. Uh -huh. I need to grow up and quit asking God to put money in my cash app. Amen. I can do what he do. Jesus says, the same things I do, you shall do also. As soon as you adopt my logic and my reasoning, you will do what I'm able to do. Come on, y'all. And if I'm with you and I'm never going to leave you, the Spirit of God is your Voice, my voice in you is coaching you on what you ought to be doing and what you ought to be saying because a man will have what, come on, talk to me, a man will have whatever he says and he got to guard his 
thoughts because thinking is saying. So you not only have to watch what comes out of your mouth, you have to watch what's in your thought life, which comes out of your heart. Because according to the heart, come on, talk to me, church. It's according to what's in your heart. It's the issues of heart that life proceeds from. So you got to guard your heart. Amen. By constantly saying the same thing. I am an infinite being. I am an infinite being. I, and the more you grow toward the truth, the more these other the scales of that lie will fall off of you until you get into full enlightenment. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 I said yes. 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 That's where we're going, y'all. Yes, we are. Y'all learning something? Yes. Amen. So one of the first things we want to talk about is shame. Too many people are walking under the cover of shame. And you learn it in church. All right. Church preach shame. Shame is an enemy. You do not want your conscience to be draped up in shame. Come on, thank you. Amen. The first level of consciousness we will discuss is shame. That level of consciousness will, and we calibrate this with numbers so you can see the force, the energy life. So like if you're walking in shame, you don't, you're not very enthusiastic. There's not much energy flowing from you. You really don't want to engage in life. You're kind of hopeless. The emotion that goes with this level of consciousness is humiliation. From that, this emotion, you, you see life as hateful, and you view God as despising you. Oh, God don't love me because of what I did. And you watch how people pray on how they see God in themselves yeah. based on what they're saying in their prayer life. You know what their consciences are. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, if this is the filter that influences your consciousness, and your consciousness influences your mind, or what your mind sees, and your mind gives definition of the sens sensations you feel in your body, you now can understand one of the many ways we create sickness, and it manifests in our bodies. And what we do is, we always want to get, amen, to the result, or the effect. Oh, so now the result of your bad thinking may be arthritis, maybe high blood pressure. Come on. That's the result, but that's not the cause. Amen. You put the ax at the cause. Yes, yes. And the arthritis goes. Yes. We're always trying to fix. Yes. Yes. Amen. <laughs> the result, and we never address the cause. So we medicate the result without ever dealing with the cause. We try to cope. Yes. Amen? Y'all learning something? Yes. yes. The next level of consciousness we will talk about is the consciousness, and I'm going to do two because I'm going to quit. The next level of consciousness we will talk about is guilt. This level of consciousness calibrates around 30. From this level of consciousness, blame is the emotion that rules the day. You see yourself as being destructive, and you may think that you are controlled by some evil spirit. You will think that God is punishing you because he is vindictive. If this is the filter that colors your consciousness, your mind will accept anything that is destructive and the sensations that occur in your body. The mind will assign sickness or some other malady that will result in the body being destroyed or you will attract, or you will attract some other tragedy to happen in your life because you're guilty. Paul says, there now is no condemnation. Paul tells us, don't judge nobody, not even yourself. Jesus tells us, don't judge, because whatever judgment you measure out, you just judge and measure yourself. Yes. Don't be ashamed. Don't feel shame. You made a mistake. It's a once off. Uh -huh. You learned something. You made a decision. It was a mistake. It's a once off. Same. I made a mistake. Made a That's mistake. it. Keep on going. Yes. Let it go. Amen. Amen. Don't be guilty because you made a mistake. You didn't have enough 
information to make the right decision. Amen. Didn't have enough foresight to make the right decision. You're not guilty because according to our gospel, Jesus Christ took all that away. Yes, and if he did. took it away, where in the world is it? Why are you trying to drag up something right. that Jesus has taken away? So do not feel guilty. Amen. Now you say, well, you mean you give me a license to do anything I want to? Not if you got the Spirit of God, Come because on. the Spirit of God won't harm anybody. Uh-huh. Say that. That's right. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you ain't human. You need to lock your butt up somewhere and throw away the key. And I, we, we got institutions to do that for you crazy folks. I'm talking to people that... that <laughs> I'm talking to people that really want to know how do we master this in life. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. I got, we got some more. I'm going to stop because I, I'm out of time. But what we want to do is get our minds there to understand the psychosomatic problem that all of us have. And it don't matter what religion you call yourself. I'm going to tell you something. Arthritis, high blood pressure, don't read the sign on the, on the building to see if it's going to bother the people in the building. You don't care if there's a Jewish sign up there, a Muslim sign up there, a Hindu sign up there, a Christian sign up there. Everybody got some arthritis. Everybody got some high blood pressure. Everybody got some depression. So this message is not, and it's good for the Christians to adopt it, but this will uh, this work on anybody who's anybody. spiritual. Anybody. You just happen to be sitting front row. Uh, yes, yes. Are, you, are you receiving today? Yes. Now just don't do, don't just be hearers of the word. Not just hearers. Be doers of the word. Doers of the word. And be blessed and walk and in your blessing. Blessed. All right, we're going to stop there. Father God, we thank you for the miracles of hearing and ministry of the word of God, and we trust that everything that was said will be received in the spirit, that it was delivered, and we also give you praise. But God has plans for our lives, and none of those plans include 